When it comes to wiring an XLR cable, there's two common ways to do this. The first is with a traditional twisted pair where there's a ground and two different copper cores running down the cable to transmit the signal. The second way is with a star quad configuration. There's four cores and a ground wound tightly in a different configuration, a star configuration or a square configuration in order to deliver two parallel copies of that balance signal all the way down the line to either termination of the cable. If you don't know what that means, we're going to show you a couple practical examples here. We're going to explain the benefits and the cons of either design. We're going to make some recommendations as to which may or may not work best for you in your situation. So what I have in front of me here is a traditional twisted pair XLR cable that I took apart. You can see here that we cut and exposed the shielding that runs down the cable. This copper runs all the way down the cable and then it kicks out and it typically gets wound together like this and then this gets soldered to the XLR connection and this acts as the ground for your audio cable. Next, we have two copper cores. Again, they're typically inside some sort of PVC covering. And both of these copper cores get an identical version of your audio signal coming from your microphone to an audio mixer, for example, except one of these legs will get phase inverted. And when it gets to the audio mixer, that phase will get realigned. And this process is designed to cancel out any noise that is picked up, any electromagnetic noise or something like that, interference like it picks up along these copper cables and it should cancel it out. So if I take apart an XLR connector here, you'll see how this works a little bit. So I'm just gonna take apart this connector, expose some of the components here. So you can see here what I'm talking about. The ground, the shielding here, gets soldered to one of the connections on your XLR connector. And then on the back side here, you can see that we have a red and a white. And those carry the other two legs to the other two pins on your XLR connection. Now, what are the benefits of a twisted pair balanced audio cable like this? They're inexpensive to make. They're pretty easy to solder and make a cable yourself. And most of the time, you never notice any issue with this cable whatsoever. It doesn't matter if it's the cheapest Amazon Basics cable or a really expensive version of this design. Most people would never notice a quality difference either way. Now, what are the cons of using a cable like this? In some environments, if you're in a very intense environment, especially with a lot of lighting, lighting seems to do cr kind of crazy things with power and, and waves and all that, or magnets or speakers or computer monitors, electronics, wireless chargers, all that type of stuff creates these magnetic fields that copper wire can pick up and it can create issues with your audio signal from your microphone to your audio mixer, your audio mixer to your speakers, whenever you're running these. So what's the solution to this problem? Let's take a look at the star quad design. We'll see how it's different and how it attempts to fix some of these problems. So here we have a star quad cable. You can see here we've exposed the shielding. On this one, it has a tin uh, plated copper with a different configuration for the shielding, but it kicks out the same way where that would act as a ground. Then you can see here that we have four cores instead of the two that we had with the standard twisted pair. You can see that they are run opposite, so the two blue are run opposite of the two white, and this way that you don't have two blues beside each other or something like that. And then this configuration is also more tightly wound down the length of the cable. Now let's take a look at how it's wired on an XLR connector. I'm gonna pull this off, take all the protective pieces off of it, try not to break it. So you can see here the tin shielding from the outside of the cable here gets soldered to one of the pins. And then both blue cores get soldered to the same pin and both white cores get soldered to the same pin. So you're running parallel. So what are the benefits of the star quad design? The benefits of this design is that this design does work as intended. It will preserve the integrity of your balanced audio connection between your microphone and your audio mixer in those really intense environments that will typically cause degradation of your signal with a traditional twisted pair. This design does work, but it comes at a cost. What are the disadvantages of this design? First of all, since we're running two parallel lines inside of this, we will have an increased capacitance. What does that mean? 
It means practically over a really long run, you may lose some of the higher frequencies. Now, this isn't an issue if you're under 20 meters or 50 meters. So definitely if you're running around inside a studio with your longest cable is 25 or 50 feet, you will not notice any degradation of the higher frequencies with this design. That being said, you obviously also have an increased labor cost because you have twice as many connections to solder. You might have a stiffer cable because there's twice as many components inside of it. You will have a more expensive cable because there's more components inside of it and more labor. So some of these things do add up. So it's not always wise to just go out and get a star quad cable no matter what. So what do we recommend for a studio? If you're in a studio with a lot of guitar amps, big magnets around, speakers, more magnets, TVs, computers, all that type of stuff, you would be safer by having a star, star quad cables in your studio to help protect you among all that interference. Now, it might not be an issue in your particular configuration all the time or as a one-off, but it is a more safe bet to go with the star quad cable. They're not that much more expensive, and in that environment, they are more likely to help you than hurt you. What about live sound and live events? With live sound and live events, you generally have a couple things. You have less electromagnetic interference because you're more spread out, you're not in a small room, and you generally have longer runs of cable across the stage, all the way out to the mixer, all that type of thing. So for both of those reasons, a traditional twisted pair will generally do a fine job working in those environments and you don't need the added cost or any of the downsides like cables that are slightly less flexible in that environment. So for live sound and live events, I would say a traditional twisted pair cable would be your best bet. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions about any of these concepts between the twisted pair and the star quad design, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you do want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. <laughs>